Hey, and welcome to the first video in a series on getting started setting up a home automation system with Home Assistant and Node-RED. This is actually my first YouTube video ever, so just bear with me. Uh, we'll try to get through this in, uh, in one piece. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, to begin, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be designating a computer as our home automation hub, the main source of control and data in the home automation system. Now, I've set this up on a virtual machine, but that's not completely necessary. You can set it up on a Raspberry Pi or a bare metal machine, whatever works best for you and your infrastructure. Any machine that can run, you know, a lightweight Arch Linux installation is going to be just fine for you. We're going to be installing three pieces of software today. Number one is Home Assistant. Now that's the main uh, broker for, well, we're going to be using it as the main broker for interacting with our physical hardware and managing the states of our physical hardware. So it's going to kind of be the bridge from the home automation system to our hardware level. The other piece of software we're going to be using is Node-RED. Now that is going to be used for orchestration. Now Home Assistant, let's back up a bit. Home Assistant on its own, you can configure automations in Home Assistant. You can, there's a, a lots of room for logic based on different sensor data and, and general home automation systems based on timing and sun state and all that kind of stuff. It's a powerful platform, but a lot of the configuration in terms of automation is very text-based in a language called the YAML. Now, complex automations start to get a little bit cumbersome, and that's where Node-RED steps in. Node-RED, like I said, is a piece of orchestration software that is put out by IBM, completely open source, and it allows the graphical editing of process flows and automation flows very much like a flowchart, very drag and drop with configurable nodes that you can place in and out of flows, debug nodes, things like that. Uh, we'll get into that in more detail later, but that's kind of the explanation why we're using a separate piece of software for the orchestration. The third piece of software we're going we're to be installing is InfluxDB. Now a lot of people are familiar with InfluxDB. It's in use in a lot of different projects. Um, it's basically a time series database and we're going to be using that for storing data that's leveraged by Node-RED. Um, various sensor data, state data, uh, it's going to be used for trending and things like that. So let's get started. We'll install uh, Home Assistant first and uh, log into the machine. All right, so I'm just going to my automation machine now. So one of the things I did while creating the VM is I also gave it a static IP. Now a static IP is important so that all the um, external uh, external connections that you have at the machine, the, the uh, external interfaces, don't get broken if your machine starts up with a different IP all of a sudden. Now you can you can deliver a static IP in a very di various different methods, but um, I used DHCP reservation in my router. You can actually set a, a static IP directly on the host itself but however you do it there's a lot of good guides on the internet however you do it is uh, not important it's just ma just the only thing that matters is that the IP does stay the same so let's quickly just uh, set the host name for this VM because it is a brand new one we'll set it to something a little more intuitive we'll call it automation so Automation, and we'll give it a reboot. Now, like I said, this is a clean install of Arch Linux. Um, I chose Arch Linux because that's what I'm most comfortable with, but that's not to say you can't do the same thing. Well, you can definitely do this the same uh, the same software setup in almost any flavor of Linux, whether it be Ubuntu, Mint, or whatever, what have you. I just choose Arch Linux because, like I said, it's more comfortable to me. So you're gonna the only difference from what I do between what I do and what you do is going to be probably the package manager commands, and that's about it. The rest is going to be pretty ubiquitous to any Linux install. Okay, so it looks like our virtual machine rebooted. Let's get back into it. We can see that the uh, name is now Automation. Okay, so like I said, we're going to start by installing Home Assistant, and that requires a couple packages first uh, that we're going to be using the Arch package manager to grab. So that's going to be Python and Python pip. So sudo pip. Pip. 
So most of you are familiar with Python. Python is just a you know a script language that a lot of very common software is written in. And Python pip is seems to be some kind of package manager for Python. I'm not so familiar with pip, but we're going to be using it in the next step. So the actual Home Assistant installation is going to be done with pip uh, package manager. So let's uh, do that now. That's a sudo pip re install Home Assistant. Uh, I, before we go any further, some of you will notice that I'm using a user called NetAdmin. Now I set this user up to be a temporary privileged user that I'm going to use to install the software, and the software is going to run as NetAdmin. The reason I did this, and I'm not just doing the whole thing as root, is because we want to avoid having the software run as root, especially the pieces that are going to have external web interfaces. We don't want to run any risk of uh, privilege escalation exploit or anything like that. So right now NetAdmin has pseudo privileges. At the end of the installation process, I'll be taking those away and the software will just be running as NetAdmin, the unprivileged user. You can name it whatever you want, just it's best practice not to use root. Anyway, let's go back to the install. Okay, so it's done a couple things there. I got a warning at the bottom to up upgrade my pip version, but it's not critical at the moment. What we're going to do now is before we create a systemd service file to make Home Assistant start and run automatically, we're going to run it a few times to generate its initial configuration files. Um, this is just recommended by the, the guys over at Home Assistant uh, on the first run. You know, execute it, let it run a couple times, create its configuration files, stop it, and then add it into your auto start via systemd. So the, to run Home Assistant, this command is very simple. You just type pass, and you'll see that uh, it didn't have a configuration file at first, and it's created one in Home NAT Admin Home Assistant. That'll be important to remember for later when we create the service file. So Home Assistant is going through. It's installing some of its dependencies. You might see some error messages on this first startup, and this is exactly why we're going to be doing it a couple times uh, until we have a clean start. It's just part of the process as it as it resolves all of its internal Python dependencies. Okay, it's kind of stopped moving a little bit now, so we're going to kill it with uh, Control C twice and give it a restart. And you'll see that usually on the second and third restart, we start to get a lot cleaner uh, view of the logs or the runtime application logs here that we're seeing. At this point, we can even probably go in and test the web interface. So let's give it a that always runs on by default port 8123. So that's unless we've changed it in the uh, configuration file. You should expect it to be on 8.1.2.3. And we're here. Home Assistant has started up. And we can see the web interface is pretty plain. We haven't added much yet. So I think we're ready to go. Stopping the application here. And we can start configuring it with our systemd service files. A couple hard control Cs will get rid of uh, any messages. Or get rid of any running process from Home Assistant. Doesn't look pretty, but it's not going to do any damage at this point. Okay, so let's create a systemd service file, and we're going to create that in etsy systemd service, and we're going to create a file called has.service. So we'll use, we'll use the nano text editor just for simplicity's sake right now. So again, sudo nano etsy systemd system has.service. And I've got this pre-populated, but I will share this in the comments of the video so that everyone can see exactly what these are. Okay, so here's the Home Assistant unit file. Uh, as you can see, it's a pretty basic uh, unit file. It's going to be running as user netadmin from group users. But here's the key part. Uh, in the exec start, we're going to be specifying the config location, which is slash home slash netadmin dot home assistant. And that's basically just to make sure that we are specifying and using the same file set that we created earlier with the two manual runs. Okay, so we'll do a control X and a Y to save and an enter to quit. So. Now we can enable the uh, systemd service file so that Home Assistant starts on boot, and we can start the process via systemd. So we'll do a sudo systemctl enable pass, and 
there we can see it's put in the right spot and we'll do a sudo system ctl start pass okay so now hash should be started and we should see it running at 8123 which we do perfect so we still have a very plain config here I think auto discovery is going to kick off and start discovering some of the hardware that, that's in my home right now. So we might see a couple things pop up like Sonos and Philips Hue and stuff like that. But we're not going to focus on this right now. We have this installation sitting and waiting. We're now going to move on to the Node Red install. And yeah, see, so you can see it's just it's auto discovered my Wink system, uh, some Sonoses, some Chromecasts, whatnot. Okay, so. Let's move on to installing Node-RED. Now Node-RED, like I said, is from IBM, and it doesn't use the Python stack that Home Assistant uses. It actually uses the NPM or the Node.js stack using the NPM pass it, uh, package manager. So the first thing we're gonna do is use Pacman to install NPM. Oh, shouldn't do a CD Pacman, that's a pseudo Pacman. That's why NPM. Yes to that. Okay, so that was quick. And now we're going to actually use NPM to install Node-RED, much like we use PIP3 to install Home Assistant. So that's going to be a sudo NPM install uh, dash g dash dash unsay perm uh, that unsafe perm part looks a little bit daunting, but it's just to do with user switching. Uh, so it's it's so you don't have to use root to do the installation of certain parts of the package. So it's actually a a good thing. And node red. And we'll let npm do its thing. It takes a little longer than uh, than Home Assistant did, but it's still not that bad. Okay, so Node-RED is installed, and we're going to do the same thing we did with Home Assistant. We're actually going to run Node-RED manually and let it create some files in the netadmin home directory. So Node-RED, and you can see it, it starts up here. It's, it's launched its web server on port 1880, which is the default. And we can see here the important uh, things to note here are the settings file and the user directory. Uh, so it's best to take those and copy them into a notepad file or a gedit file or whatever it is you have and uh, save them for later. So Node-RED doesn't need to be started multiple times to create its configs. It's already good. So we're just going to go ahead and kill it. And then we are going to create another systemd unit file for it. So we'll use nano again. And we'll do sudo nano etsy systemd system node-red.service. It's an empty file. And we'll paste, I'll paste in what I've got here for the unit file and I'll put this in the comments as well or not in the comments I'll put them in the video description as well so you guys can see that okay so this is the node red unit file this is a lot like the has unit file we created earlier we're using group or sorry user net admin in group users and in the exec start we're specifying the settings file we want to use and we're specifying the user directory we want to use and again these two specifications are matching the files we created earlier on the manual command line run of Node-RED and uh, the ones that we put away in the, the net text file. Okay, so we will control X to quit, Y to save, and enter to write. And now we can actually start the Node-RED service and enable it. So sudo systemctl enable Node-RED. Okay, we can see that it's done that and we'll start it now. Pseudo system CL start node red. And let's check it out in the web browser. Uh, keep in mind it's at port 1880 now, not 8123. And we can see that indeed node red is running. This is what node red looks like. A little, uh, it could be a little intimidating at first, but um, we'll get to the actual use and configuration of node red later. Let's move on to the last piece of software we need, which is InfluxDB. So InfluxDB, uh, as far as Arch Linux users go, it can be found in the AUR. Um, for other Linux distros, you'll have to just check with your package repositories to find out where it is. But I'm going to use our man to install InfluxDB. S InfluxDB. Do I want to continue? Yes. 
no, I don't really care for the changes. I'm not much of a developer type, so it means nothing to me anyway. Proceed with the installation, yes. So it's just going to resolve all of its dependencies and install Influx. Okay, so that's Influx AB installed. Um, unlike the other two pieces of software we've got so far, we don't need to do an initial run of Influx to create any kind of files. At least I don't think so. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to enable Influx AB to start on boot. So sudo systemctl enable Influx DB. And we're going to start it in the same way we started all the other systemd unit files. This one came with a systemd unit file. Luckily, we didn't have to create it because we were using the Arch Linux package manager, which does that. Uh, for again, for users who are maybe installing it from source or whatever, uh, just use the other unit files that I have as an example to create your InfluxDB unit file if necessary. So, it started. Uh, we got no errors from the startup command, so we're going to go ahead and give it a test. And the way you test InfluxDB is just type the word influx into your command line. And if it connects, it'll leave you at a shell like this, which means it's connected to InfluxDB at localhost 8086, which is correct, and it's all working. So we'll quit this now. That's all three pieces of software we wanted to install installed. Uh, in the next video, I will be going over initial configuration of Home Assistant and maybe some initial configuration of Node-RED to get them communicating with one another, get some basic device automations in there, and we'll move on from there in advance. I, Honestly, I haven't planned too much more than that, but uh, we'll see where it takes us. So anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks very much for having patience with my first video. Uh, see you all soon. Bye-bye.